Hi, my name is Charlotte Kamala and I'm from Iglulik Nunavut. I am one of the throat singers from Sila and Rai. Sila is the name for the Inuit ladies who throat sing in the group. Sila is the Inuktitut word for our outside surroundings. We say that Sila is outside, it's what encompasses our earth, um, and we use that word to honor our land and the importance it has to our people. Throat singing is done between Inuit to Inuit who use their voice, their throat, and their breath. There is a leader and a follower. The follower imitates the sounds from the leader the second that it's made. The two singers compete to see who can outsing the other. The loser usually ends up stopping from laughter or coughing or running out of breath or losing the beat first. Throat singing is a form of entertainment for all. It's a way to stay connected to our culture. It's a way to keep warm by using your breath to create body heat and it's a spiritual practice as well. Here's a short demonstration. <sighs> We sing songs that imitate the sounds of nature, wildlife, and our environment. Other songs are for friendly competition and entertainment and can also be lullabies to children. The majority of songs have no words. Um, the only song that I know that has words has only just a few Inuktitut words. They're all just uh, sounds that come out of our bodies. We are inspired by our love for preserving our throat songs and the beautiful and unique sounds and beats that we create with them. We are very rooted in our Inuit culture and pull as much from our roots as possible. We are also inspired to make music that hasn't been heard before, uh, to be as universal and galactic as possible, and to share with the world the beauty of Inuit throat singing. I was 17 years old when I learned how to throat sing. When I moved to Ottawa as a teen, I felt compared to learn in order to keep a strong connection with my land and people while living in an urban setting. The only way to learn is to practice making sounds with your throat and expanding the variations as much as possible and to train your throat to keep going through the discomfort. I only teach Inuit to throat sing. Um, this is a sacred practice unique to our culture uh, that was nearly taken away from us by the churches and colonial governments. So we are in the early stages of reclamation and it needs to be brought back within our communities and our people with the knowledge that comes with them. The song Kuk, or Flood, is a bit of a remix of a traditional song called Kukvaluk, which means river. We like to add aspects of traditional songs and work them in with the beats from Rise. The environmental change has definitely had an impact in Canada's north, uh, not only to the wildlife, but also in the communities as well. Um, because Inuit still very much hunt as their livelihood, not only to feed their families, but to feed the community as well. Um, because of climate change, the sea ice is melting a lot faster than it has in the past. Uh, migration routes are now changing. The environmental change has definitely had an effect in the Canadian Arctic. So if you hear our Sila and Rise album, you'll be able to hear that many of our songs are inspired by the sounds of our nature and our environment and animals in the Canadian Arctic. You could hear that being reflected a lot in many of the songs. Um, there's one song in particular called Kuk and Inutitu means flood in English. You could watch out for that and you could hear many songs that are inspired by our environment and nature and animals. Hey everybody, it's Rise Ashen here in Ottawa and I am the Rise in Scylla and Rise. So I've been producing music uh, since I was 16 years old. I started uh, with a four track back in the day. I'm now 46, so that was uh, 30 years ago now. 
been an amazing journey making music and I've learned a lot about uh, different cultures uh, growing up making music with a whole bunch of different collaborators and mostly worked with uh, a lot of uh, artists from the African diaspora, American influences in music, hip hop, but also uh, working with different artists from the Caribbean, different artists from West Africa. I've always been fascinated with rhythm. To me, it's always been the root. When I was about seven years old, my mom sent me to a jazz man in Montreal. And so I started learning music and then just pursuing that uh, led me into producing various different types of music and with a focus for the dance floor really I've always been a dancer as well and so to me music always has to make me move otherwise it doesn't really hit me How I became associated with Scylla and Rise is that I met Cynthia, um, we were doing a project, a corporate project, where the client wanted uh, sort of a multicultural ensemble, and so I put together this ensemble with various different musicians, and eventually I was approached by the Museum of Nature to uh, do some remixing for an exhibit that they had, a northern exhibit. It was an exhibition featuring artifacts and different uh, natural elements from the north, and so when they initially approached me, I started remixing music from the several different cultures that uh, coexist around the Arctic Circle. And so I was remixing this stuff and sort of focusing on the Inuit music. And uh, I remember that I knew Cynthia, so I called her and I was able to get us a budget and Cynthia brought Charlotte in. And so we ended up doing this live performance, which was a, sort of a rudimentary version of what we do now, where I was playing as a DJ using a looper. But as I started learning more about throat singing, um, you know, I started realizing that I needed to be able to play the throat singing game with Cynthia and Charlotte. And so eventually I switched to playing as a percussionist, which is a very different thing. And it's kind of the essence of what we do now. Uh, I play the throat singing game with my percussion with them. That's my involvement in the group. And I produce the records. All right. Peace out, everybody. Hope you enjoy the music.